I just posted a video a couple hours ago and I need to post another one now because we have massive breaking news. We have an AMD employee giving us something like a release date for their RX 9000 series. We have a few other bits of speculation, rumor, and leaks regarding the RX 9000 series. We also have a big NVIDIA question, which is, wait a minute, if frame generation is no longer done using optical flow hardware and done on tensor cores, does that mean the 20 and 30 series could potentially support frame generation now? And we have an NVIDIA response to that question. And as I mentioned earlier, today was the embargo for 5090 unboxings, and I already posted a video on that. So if you missed that, maybe check that out as well if you're interested. I also go into my thoughts on uh, uh, build choices you could make regarding the 5090. Anyway, let's circle back around to this because I think this is the biggest information and why I just went straight into we're posting another video today. We have David McAfee, is that McAfee? I don't know how to pronounce it, whatever, uh, from AMD. So he is direct AMD employee. He is not leaks and rumors saying, Radeon 9000 series hardware and software are looking great and we are planning to have a wide assortment of cards available globally. Can't wait for gamers to get their hands on the cards when they go on sale in March. So we do not have an exact March release date, but we have the fact that the release date is in March. There had been rumors that we might see it as soon as January 23rd, um, and as we got closer to that, we're like, I feel like we should have heard something about it before then. Uh, so if that was at some point planned, it currently is no longer the plan, or maybe they planned on March all along. Remember, all AMD ever officially stated was quarter one of 2025. Now, that would uh, one quarter of 12 months is three months, January, February, March, so we're at least going to make the quarter one promised deadline. Again, whether they had initially planned something before that, it's difficult to say. There is some speculation, this is where we're moving into more leaks and rumors territory, that AMD may have been expecting less price con uh, competitive pricing from NVIDIA, and that when their pricing was revealed is actually lower than the previous generation for everything below the 90 class, and AMD is not currently uh, choosing to compete with the 90 class as far as we know, that maybe it put a wrench into their pricing plans. Uh, more on that here. So uh, I'll link all my sources in the video description. This is from PC Games Hardware, although I found it through a videocards.com article uh, saying AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT bumpy launch reportedly linked to price pressure from Nvidia. Uh, so what is this? So a PC games hardware moderator named Poker Clock, who is apparently a well-informed person within retailer circles, has given some uh, information. But again, this is leaks rumors territory, not official from AMD territory. So just take it for what it is as maybe a potential explanation, but could also be inaccurate. Uh, so this says the announcement of AMD's new mid-range graphics cards, namely the Radeon RX 9070 XT, has now taken on obscure proportions. The product presentation at CS was received disappointingly by many interested parties and was even classified as a laughing stock in some cases. Neither prices nor release dates have been announced so far. A stalker. Well, now, uh, now this was posted before we just got the March date revealed from AMD. So now we at least have a general ballpark of March. But anyway... Uh, the graphics cards seem to have been in stock at retailers for some time. And we have seen so many pictures of these cards around. They were available at CES. They seem to be available at various retailers. Stuff has been leaking out. And then he goes on to say, strange, and yet the whole thing obviously has a monetary background. He says, apparently there is no agreement, both AMD and retailers in particular, on the price at which these graphics cards should be sold because the originally planned price range appears to have been set far too high in view of the looming competition from Nvidia. The problem is that price corrections for deliveries that have already been made can sometimes be difficult. In other words, if they had planned on a higher price uh, when they shipped these out to retailers, and then found out NVIDIA was more price competitive than they expected, and then had to back down on what they're gonna sell these for, what does that do to the uh, price initially agreed upon with the retailers based on the uh, originally assumed higher price? Anyway, I'll continue with the quote. Uh, in practice, this is often cushioned with marketing money or cashback payments. 
The manufacturers pay the dealers a kind of bonus for each graphics card sold or offer higher discounts the more units are sold. Once these payments are fixed, the dealers take this into account in advance in the form of lower prices. This works well as long as the payments flow, but this is exactly where there seem to be real problems. On the one hand, AMD seems to have to pay a significant cash back, significantly higher than it actually wants, and appears to be economically healthy. On the other hand, there are reports in dealer circles that AMD is already several months behind on cash back payments, and that this is already leading to liquidity problems in some places. Or to put it another way, the dealers don't want any more until AMD clarifies certain things, and presumably it won't work without marketing money from day one of the sale. At least not if you want to be attractively positioned compared to the competition in terms of price. Okay, once again, disclaimer that all of this could just be this guy making it all up, right? I'm not saying I think it is, but I'm saying this is not official from AMD. Okay. It does sound potentially, uh, potentially, <laughs> potentially plausible though, that basically what's going on is, oh no, uh, Nvidia priced more competitively than we thought, um, what do we do now? <laughs> and then that's where it gets in all that explanation of how that affects retailers with cashbacks and whatnot to hit actually uh, competitive pricing. But then you have to wonder, uh, what's AMD's you know manufacturing costs? What kind of margins do they want? And how much of a cashback can they give uh, before their gross margins are too low and, you know, maybe, you know, AMD is bigger than just graphics cards. So maybe they're not happy with that, you know. Anyway, so there's a lot going on here. So could that explain this going on to March? Or is it possible that they just planned on March all along? You know, they've never officially said any other date. So there is that. Um, anyway, I'll leave you guys to speculate on whether you believe those reasonings, but we do have March officially from AMD. Another interesting post we're getting here is from Everest on Twitter saying AMD rating uh, with a, basically a, um, a screenshot from ProGear. Uh, it looks like that came from Momomo US, so I, I guess maybe that's the initial uh, person who spotted this. Uh, saying AMD Radeon image sharpening RIS technology support. RIS enhances clarity and visual detail in games by increasing sharpness while maintaining optimal performance through built-in AI, delivering a more enjoyable visual experience. Now this is interesting because uh, AMD for a long time now has had RIS uh, image shar sharpening through their drivers, but it's looking like we are now seeing a listing for one of their graphics cards at ProGear mentioning an AI enhanced version of this, which is kind of interesting. So uh, a big question around this whole, uh, you know, 90, 70 stuff besides the release date is, um, you know, what about the AI enhanced, uh, you know, upscaling, like, so FSR4. Now RIS is not FSR4, but is there gonna be any other AI enhanced versions of their driver level technologies? Here, this is implying maybe there's something going on uh, for their image sharpening. Could there be anything going on for anything else? I mean, they have other interesting driver level tools uh, like Radeon Boost and AFMF driver level frame generation and things like that. So uh, it is interesting to speculate on what other sorts of AI use cases there may be if uh, their new line does have additional machine learning capabilities compared to previously. And again, also, uh, I would speculate another potential uh, reason for March would be, is FSR4 ready yet? Uh, because if it's not, then maybe that's why you'd be waiting on March. Or maybe there are multiple reasons why it would make sense to wait for March. We can't really know for sure. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the other big chunk of news we had today, which is this. So this is an interview with the NVIDIA uh, man behind DLSS upscaling, at least in charge of that. Obviously, more than one person is, uh, is working on it. Um, now, this is an interview with Digital Foundry, and they ask the question that so many people have been wondering since we saw the CES presentation about the new frame generation. Well, NVIDIA's new multi-frame generation, generating multiple frames between two uh, actually rendered frames, is exclusive to the 50 series. They said that the switch to how they do frame generation is also available on the 40 series, and that's moving away from using optical flow acceleration hardware on the GPU to actually using uh, AI to do the optical flow analysis. And that AI is of course done on the tensor cores, which 
not just the 40 series have, so do the 30 series and the 20 series, although there have been improvements over time. Which means that their excuse for why only the 40 series could do frame generation, because only the 40 series had the proper optical flow uh, hardware, at least adequate amount of it, um, that's no longer true if it's not using that, if it's using tensor cores. Now the question then comes in, do the 20 and 30 series cards, or at least some of them, have enough uh, you know, tensor core potential you know, uh, for, for machine learning applications to do frame generation this way? So when then asked that by Digital Foundry, well, let's listen to the response. Um, I think this is primarily a question of optimization and also engineering and and then the the ultimate user experience. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you know we're launching uh, this frame generation, the best uh, multi-frame generation technology with the 50 series, um, and we'll see uh, what we're able to squeeze out of older hardware. Uh right there. Okay, so obviously this is not saying it will come to older hardware, but this is not the flat out uh, answer they gave us previously, where why the 40 series got it and 20 and 30 series didn't. They just flat out said, doesn't have the optical flow hardware, not happening. They're gonna, he says, we're uh, able to w see what we can squeeze out of older hardware, meaning they're at least potentially looking into this. And remember that the new transformer model for upscaling, not frame generation, but upscaling, is going to have support for the 20, 30, and 40 series. Again, they talk about it maybe taking additional uh, uh, power to be able to support it, so it's possible that it won't be as fast as the older CNN models on the older cards, but is it possible that frame generation would work well enough, at least on some of these older cards? And that's interesting. So this is similar to AMD's response they've given, for example, for their uh, uh, AI-based FSR4 upscaling and whether it will support cards uh, previous to the 9000 series, which is they're focusing on the 9000 series, but they're not opposed to looking into whether they could get it or some version of it running on older hardware, but their focus right now is on the 9000 series. NVIDIA is giving a very similar response for this frame generation uh, technique, which is they're focusing on uh, getting it up and running on the 50 series, especially with multi-frame generation, and they have confirmed support for the 40 series, uh, but then they're open to exploring the possibility of it running on the 20 and 30 series. Let's be very clear, he doesn't say it will support them. Anyway, but that's at least interesting news. Now, for the more uh, cynical-minded, you might also take this as uh, for the p in other words, for the people who thought that maybe the 20 and 30 series really could have done frame generation uh, using their older model and that it was just an artificial marketing decision to try to market their 40 series cards, uh, it's if you do buy into that more cynical analysis, and I'm not saying I do, I'm just saying from that perspective, which I know is a popular perspective online, um, you could also look at this as, well, now we're trying to sell the 50 series and they have multi-frame generation, and we're making that exclusive to the 50 series. So to sell our new generation, you know, we're no longer as reliant on the previous generations no longer having any frame generation, so we'd be more open to opening that up. So that's another way of looking at this. Again, though, I'm not saying I ever bought into that argument. If they were using a certain level of optical flow hardware, um, it, it's possible that that, that actual, actually was required up until they've moved away from the optical flow hardware requirement. Anyway, this is also just an interesting interview. Um, I will link all my sources in the video description, and they talk about a lot of other stuff uh, besides just that. Anyway, that's what I've got for you guys today, other than my RTX 5090 unboxing and build discussion video, which I posted earlier, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.